Hey everybody, it's been a little while since I made a uh, how to contact me for commissions video and some of my terms have changed. So I figured I'd just throw this video out there for all my new subscribers or somebody who just happens to stumble across the channel and probably find something out. Now, there are a few very important things that you must know when you're trying to contact me. Now, first off, you must have a nicely written email. I don't like to answer uh, pricing questions in my comments section uh, just simply because it's just hard for me to keep up with. So an email sent to my email address, MackieDennis at Yahoo.com, would be wonderful. Now, part two of that is the email preferably needs to be, well, actually not preferably, let's make this a requirement. It needs to be well-written, thought out, uh, well, so I'm going to try proper capitalization, grammar, punctuation, everything like that. Overall, it just makes my life easier, and it makes it easier for me to communicate. I try to do the same when I respond to you guys. So a nice email helps me to regurgitate a nice email for you. Uh, other than that, email, good capitalization grammar. Um, I usually get back to people within about three days. If I don't, feel free to send me a second email because I get about 30 to, 30 to 40 emails a day sometimes, so it can be kind of hard for me to keep up with. So if you guys don't get response within three days, please, please feel free to uh, send me a second one asking me if I got your email. Uh, other than that, I guess I'll move on to the commissions that I do. And I'm just going to cut it real quick and jump into a new segment right there. Alright guys, I'm going to put the commissions off until the end uh, because it's quite a long list and I'm going to try to list out the specs of each. Uh, we're going to move on to my terms of commission right now, I guess is what you kind of call it. Um, basically when you pay me, you kind of enter into a contract pretty much. And what that constitutes is that you get the blaster, I get the money up front uh, via PayPal usually. And I'll go into that in a little more. But uh, payment retractions are usually are not looked upon. I will fight you every step of the way via PayPal if that, if that happens to come up. Uh, that's really it. I've been screwed before a couple times on that, so I'd really rather not deal with like retractions. Uh, so we'll just go into the next part. Uh, payment is required up front in full with shipping from the get-go. The second you say, okay, let's do this. I mean, you can put it off, say, I'm going to contact you again in a month or two, but the second you actually pay me, contract sealed, and I'm going to get to work immediately. And that, what that does is it helps me so I can get all the materials together and, uh, you know, have gas in the car so I can go everywhere and get all my stuff because I drive all over the place to get really specific materials that I really like. Um, so that's what it is. Payments required up front. Uh, PayPal will charge me a fee of 4% if you uh, just do a uh, services order. Uh, or not a services, a goods order. So I prefer payment either as a gift payment, which you don't have to add any percentage onto, or 4% through a goods payment. And I'll explain that more in an email if you guys need a uh, theme to know exactly what that means. Um, I will give you another thing about delivery dates. I will give you an estimated date. Now, my estimated dates change all the time, and sometimes I go way, way over because I'm constantly working on other things. Now, that's partially my fault because I usually can overload myself a little bit because sometimes I get pretty tired and uh, life can slow me down a little bit. But uh, estimated dates, um, if you'd like to know any sort of progress, you can email me at any time you want. But uh, I'll give you estimated dates. I can't really give anything super solid just because everything changes. When I need material orders, when I'm uh, you know, out doing other stuff with my family, with my dad, you know, all sorts of things like that. So that's that. And uh, a lot of people have asked me, what kind of shipping carrier do I use? I use United States Postal Service simply because it is pretty easy for me to use. And uh, However, international shipping for any of my British, Australian, uh, Singapore, it is pretty expensive. Uh, just because it's simply it's going across you know, the other side of the world, essentially. And uh, a lot of you guys need to learn that uh, shipping a blaster of any considerable weight, like a homemade, usually is going to run at least $40, if not a little more. And that's just the sad part of uh, you guys living over there. But uh, that's just how it is. International shipping is not cheap. And uh, I just thought I'd put it out there for you guys. Now, uh, let me see. I can also do, uh, this is kind of branching in the commissions a little bit, but I also do material orders. Say you're in uh, Australia, Britain, you know, wherever else they don't get these. If you need CPVC couplers, PVC couplers, parts for a snap, uh, springs, I sell a lot of springs. Uh, Go ahead and feel free to contact me. I'm pretty reasonable in prices. I can sell PETG by the foot and uh, pretty standard stuff. I'll list prices for everything at, at the end part of the video where I show you guys all my 
commission specs, price, and everything like that. Uh, let me see if I got anything else on this list. Um, my commissions are pretty straightforward. You enter into a contract, I get it done as I can. Now I do go a couple commissions I've went over pretty far on, and when that happens, I usually will include a very nice gift for you, whether it be a, a custom matched pistol to it, or you know what I mean by pistol, uh, a night finder, uh, another modded blaster barrel systems. That's what usually happens when I go over. For example, on the splatter pass back there that you guys saw in my last video, that's getting a breach, a night finder, uh, something, I think a hopper even, because I've been like three months over or four months over the due date on that, so there's a lot of stuff going with that. And that's just something I try to do because it makes me feel a lot better about it. So I think that's it for this, guys, and I think we're going to go into me throwing up pictures and showing uh, off some blasters I've made and list some pricing and options for those blasters. So if you guys have any more questions, feel free to drop them below, and I'm just going to keep talking. All right, guys, now I'm going to start off with my stock blaster section, and I'm just going to do this real quick. I can mod any, pretty much any stock blaster that is available now. I mean, if you have a vintage something and you want me to mod it, that is perfectly doable. Uh, buying vintage blasters, you know, to modify for you, that's a little bit of a pain, a little bit of a stretch. So, preferably something that I can get easily or you can ship to me. Now, regarding that, I can do pretty much any sort of humans versus zombie mod out there. Pretty much long shots, recons, you know, alpha troopers, any of that crap. Not crap, but <laughs> compared to the stuff I usually build, it is quite easy for me to do. I am pretty good at paint jobs, and I can do detail work, as you guys have seen on Tribulation before over there, which is still sitting over there as my H2Z blaster. Um, up voltage, stampedes, ravens, anything. And uh, believe it or not, I do better work than Bobo on this. I'm Bobo Lolo, and I approve this message. So, humans versus, blast versus zombies blasters, completely doable. Any other stock blaster, you know, I've done AirTech 4000s, 3000s, 2000s, uh, Doomsayers, Passes, uh, let me think, Nightfinders, I've never messed with a Maverick because they're not worth the time, <laughs> uh, Big Blast, Tornadoes, SM5Ks, I mean, I've done, done a lot of it. I've done Brass Breaches on Long Shots, I don't particularly like doing it, but, uh, I can. Now we're going to jump straight into all my homemades and super complex builds and whatnot. All right guys, now the first start of homemades is we're gonna start with the Pump Snap 3.0. Now the Pump Snap 3.0 is the third iteration of my original Pump Snap design, which was a collaboration between a number of parties. And uh, it features a seven inches of draw on a full K26 spring, a clothespin style trigger, um, a Maverick handle that has been attached to the body via screws to the top, and the same thing with a priming handle that's been affixed through the full the top. Everything on this is mechanically fastened. Uh, it is all very compact at about 24, almost 24 and a half or so inches long with the stock on, I believe. I don't remember quite offhand. It might be 26. But uh, these are very powerful primaries, easily passing the 100 foot mark. Now, pricing on these will be about 140 starting. Now, paint will add about 30 to that. And a hopper clip with a clear clip is $20. If you don't need a clear clip, it's minus five. But as you see, guys, pump snaps, 140, 30 for paint, and then uh, 20 for a clear hopper clip, plus shipping your location, of course. So that's just a quick overview. If you would like to see some other videos of me shooting my pump snap 3.0s, they are all over my channel, and uh, I've posted things about them quite frequently, so feel free to ask any questions you have about them. And uh, now we're going to jump into the uh, Snap Bow. The Nerf Snap Bow Mark V, as I guess it could be called, is, uh, again, a 7-inch draw full K26 homemade. It uh, shoots the same distance as a pump snap. It's essentially 110, 115 plus feet with a hopper usually. It'll shoot a little further singled. Um, mine come with wood handles because I don't really feel like dealing with Maverick handles on them. With a full wood stock and a foregrip with a grip. Uh, they also usually have a number burned in the bottom of the handle or written on there uh, just for, you know, to tell when I built it. The wood is all very highly finished in uh, wood stain and polyurethane or paint of your choice. Uh, that doesn't cost any more. And let me think if there's anything else I really think about them. It's a pullback homemade, obviously. There's uh, not a whole lot to know about them. They start at $80 plus shipping. That includes the stock, foregrip, 
and uh, your paint or I guess you could say stain at your choice. And uh, barrel systems cost the same. A hopper clip costs twenty dollars, and uh, breeches I'll move on to later, and those cost a little bit more than that. So now we'll move on to the plus bow. The Nerf plus bow was originally invented by Captain Slug, and uh, the plus bow is essentially a homemade Nerf crossbow. It has seven inches of draw with the way I build them. I put a one inch spacer behind the spring that is made from polycarbonate. Uh, it's the clover piece as they say it. I might revi revi ugh, revise future designs to take a half, I mean not a half, an inch off the front so I can acquire shorter length while still combining full compression. They uh, come with a thumb hole stock design with a wooden back plate or shoulder stock as you could say it. Uh, nylon rods and a square plunger rod. A uh, nice, you know, plunger head made from polycarbonate, or I might have an aluminum upgrade in the future. Uh, overall, plus bows, really high build quality. I sand and file all the finishes to really nice levels of, uh, you know, smoothness. They start at $150. Um, that includes your choice of stain or paint, of course, depending on what I have on hand. And uh, they seal 100% with a skirt seal. And let me think if there's anything else I'm missing on them. Uh, hopper clips again cost the same twenty dollars. Uh, breeches will cost you know about the same. RCBs are a little bit cheaper, and are completely able to be added. Uh, let me think. If there's anything else on them? This is just trying to be a real quick overview video. I'll have video reviews of all these on my channel, and I'll link them in this video. But um, now I guess let me think. We'll move on to we'll move on to the snap carbine. The snap carbine costs ninety dollars plus shipping. I am not particularly fond of snap carbines. It is super tact elite and uh, the bolt really is not a needed thing. They feature K18 spring and about, I believe about four and a half to five inches of draw. Um, they shoot about 120 feet singled. Um, they don't do very well with the hopper clip just because of the low volume of the blaster. You know, overall it's about the same. $90 includes choice of stain or paint on the handle and they're super tech elite and that's about it. And let me think if there's anything else I'm missing. Oh, yes, I'm missing a very big one. Two very big ones, actually. I have had a lot of people ask me about the Rainbow Pump. Uh, my design of the Rainbow Pump. It was originally made by Ryan201821. Catch was devised by Daniel Beaver, Ryan, a bunch of other guys. And uh, these are very nice blasters. They are the equivalent in terms of power as the Pump Snap 3.0. They uh, easily shoot 100 past 100 foot. They have 7 inches of draw on a K26, which is fully compressed. They have a 3.0 style priming system, which includes no real breakable parts. And they feature pretty much the unbreakable rainbow catch. Also features a uh, omnidirectional catch, so your plunger head won't wear more on one side than the other. Uh, a recessed front bushing, just like a pump snap. Now, there are a few options of these, and the base price I starts at $150. The base price includes your choice of a stain or paint on the handles and uh, includes all the base price items like uh, normal hardware and uh, just really normal stuff. If you want more exotic stuff like black oxide coated hardware, costs a little more. You'll have to email me for that as well as stain all stainless steel simply because of the ex extra cost associated with it. Now I get a lot of people asking me. Hey, Nam, how much do all those clear stock pieces and clear bushings run? Well, it's going to be a bit of a shock, but a clear bushing and a clear stock together cost $60 alone in parts. So, if you're wanting those, you're going to be ponying up quite a bit of cash for them because they're simply a pain to work with. So, and now we're going to move on to the Rainbow Pistol. One of the things that I have sold a lot of, I believe I am on number 18 right now, a 5769 claim. Uh... They are very nice little blasters. They are probably one of my favorite blasters I have ever made. They uh, shoot about 85 foot singled. And uh, they can actually handle a small RSCB clip, which is pretty interesting. And uh, overall, they make a nice little pop when you prime them. They get really good seals. And they're just fantastic little pistols to play around with around the house even. And uh, they're suitable for pretty much any kind of dart. Uh, be it Streamline or Stefan, I wouldn't really recommend Whistlers with them. But uh, those are sixty dollars. Um, other options, you know, such as hardware and stuff like that, will add to it. Exotic wood can be a little more expensive. Um, but overall, cool little blaster. 
And um, my throat's starting to hurt, so I'm going to stop talking here, and I'm going to get cut to the end of the video. I forgot one last thing on my uh, blaster commissions. I also do Busby Panthers. Those are 12 plus shipping. Um, options are a little bit more. If you would like more information, you can easily contact me via my email. So now we'll move on to the end of the video. All right, everyone, I hope that cleared some questions up for you. Um, I tried to do absolutely spectacular work, and uh, most of my customers, actually all of my customers I can think of, have been very happy with the final product. I stand behind my work for three months, including parts and labor, providing you ship the blaster back to me and ship it from me to you. That's the only thing I require on uh, warranty claims. Now, that warranty is three months, and uh, includes everything barring gross misuse. So you can't bang a plus ball on the ground and expect me to fix it. You can't dry fire your pump snap 100, 500 times and expect me to fix the bushing. It's just not going to happen. But um, that's basically it. If your seal degrades a little bit, that might be normal. But I might just tell you to tighten the plunger head up. But if you're real concerned, I will fix a, well, fix minor stuff like that. Um, maintenance is mandatory for this. you got to keep the plunger looped up. And I'll, I probably won't even know if you didn't do that. But that's just a little thing I've got to throw in here. So three-month warranty. Uh, if you're a returning customer, returning customers who have spent over $50 are entitled to a 10% discount on all future orders. Now, that's just a cool little thing I like to try to do. And uh, it makes a lot of people happy because they get, you know, like, they get like 15 bucks off a barely powerful blaster. You know, it's not bad. So, I hope that clears some questions up, guys. I will talk to you guys later, and I'll probably be making a Busby Panther mod video later this week. So, alright guys. I'll talk to you later. Have a nice day, wherever you're at.